Hi there, so this video is about acquiring new skills. Uh, this is a situation that's faced by many people um, at various points in their career, mostly probably more towards the end of the PhD during their postdoc or as a young principal investigator. And so adding new skills and um, the ability to carry out certain methods to your portfolio is pretty important because it can be an important factor in, your, in a hiring decision. For example, if a lab really needs that particular expertise and you have it, it gives you an edge. On the other hand, of course, um, acquiring these skills can take a lot of your time. So there is a clear trade-off between always going after adding new skills to your portfolio and actually producing data and output with the skills that you already have. So this video is about how do you make that decision, how do you think through strategically when and how to add new skills. And we're starting right now. So basically, when should you add new skills? There's probably basically three needs or motivations for you to really add new skills. The first one is you have done your research so far, you've gotten to a point where to make further progress, you really need to look into greater detail at some process or some organism group or whatever it is you're working on. And so for that, you need another method. So then basically there is a scientific need for you to take that next step if this is really what you're interested in. And that is of course an excellent motivation to learn a new method. If it allows you then to ask the next question in your research program. The second motivation is if the entire research field that you're in is moving towards adopting a certain method as like a standard. And if you don't keep up with the standards, you're gonna be left behind because in publications it's gonna be increasingly demanded that people will um, have this particular method. And so then it's, uh, it's basically an external pressure on you from the scientific community more or less to acquire that skill if you wanna stay competitive in your field. And it's another very good reason to invest into learning a new method. And of course, there are many examples like this. It could be a new statistical technique. It could be like moving towards a certain uh, kind of molecular technique. It could be a biochemical technique, depending on whatever you're working on in environmental science or ecology. There's always new standards. There's always, uh, the field always moves uh, to have new expectations. And the third reason is like, you're just interested in it. And this is it's great. I think if you're just interested in learning a new method, you're just curious what you can do with it, and you just want to acquire that skill, that's also a great motivation to go after it. Well, now the next question that you have asked yourself, once you have established this motivation or this need, is, well, how difficult is this? How hard is it to learn for me or for you? And uh, how much time investment does it need? If it's really easy to learn for you, given what you already know, or you're in a situation where you can very easily acquire that skill, it doesn't take a lot of time, it doesn't detract a lot from the productivity that you're currently producing, um, then it's a no-brainer, just do it. I think you will always be better off having another technique uh, because it just increases the repertoire of stuff that you can do and that will always come in handy. So if it's really easy to do, just do it. If it's not easy to learn, like it requires a lot of time um, and there's a lot of reading that you have to do, a lot of practicing, you have to retool a lot. Uh, maybe even have to go some, someplace else because it's not established in your lab. An example is like molecular techniques. If you're tooling up to do molecular ecology, you would need to be familiar, become familiar with the lab work but then also with the bioinformatics pipeline and then sometimes also with the pertinent statistical techniques for multivariate data. So there is like a whole, there's like a whole tale of additional skills that you need to acquire in order to really fully use that technique. If it's a situation like that, where it really it looks like it's a massive investment to you know, tool up, then you have to ask yourself this question, Am I going to be using this method repeatedly? Is this going to be a main part of what I'm going to be doing going forward? Is this a method that I will be applying all the time to many projects? 
basically you're asking is it really worth that investment because I will be using it a lot going forward. If the answer to that question is no, then a much better way to proceed is to not learn that technique yourself, but to partner up with somebody who already knows what they're doing in your lab or in another lab and make them a collaborator. You know, like you have collected the data from your end, you would just want to add, so let's say molecular data, um, to this particular data set because you're curious about this aspect of it. Find a collaborator that does it, add them to your paper, make a collaboration or add them to your grant, um, or whatever the situation is, and then you're much better off this way because otherwise this will really detract from your progress that you're making otherwise. Now, once you have made the decision that it is worthwhile um, learning these techniques and making this investment, then um, you can go about it in a number of different ways. And the best way, and I would recommend definitely that um, everybody do that, is go to a lab where the technique is already established. Take the time, <laughs> invest the time to uh, go to a different place. If it's in the same town, the same university, or even within the same lab, then it's of course way more convenient. Um, but if it really is established in a different place, uh, where they have this running the whole entire pipeline of whatever it is, some biochemical method, some process measurement or molecular technique or statistical technique, whatever it is, if they have it already running, just go there, take your own samples ideally and learn them, on, learn the technique on your own samples because very often there is like also adjustments you need to make based on your own samples and also if you have your own samples already taken there then in the end very often you will leave already with the data for your maybe your first little paper or preliminary data for a grant proposal but I think there's a, a real advantage to practicing on your own samples already and go wherever the technique is established. You could also offer, well, I want to learn this technique, um, can I come and I would help you process your samples. Of course, that also works. But whenever there is a choice, um, you have your own samples already, then, then try to use those and make it a collaboration with somebody else. And during that collaboration, you learn that technique. That's much, much better than trying to reinvent the wheel and trying to, <laughs> or making all the mistakes um, once. <laughs> it's much more efficient if you go someplace where they tell you already everything and uh, basically give you their protocol and then you leave with that technique basically already in your bag. And that's it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.